many are the dreams and the passion and the gifts that God has invested in us. And I believe that as we understand the total package of Christ being the center of who we are and everything he stands for, we also need to understand that because of him, we have been empowered to change the world. We have been empowered to bring transformation. You know, one thing that we need to see here is that we can know all we want to know about Christ until we put the knowledge of his word into practice and become the conduit in which he changes the world. We can never touch the nations. For many years, churches have been sitting on the knowledge of the Word of God. For many years, churches have been rich in the vast of the knowledge and the wisdom of God. For many years, churches are filled with the power and the presence of God. While the communities out there, they don't get to share in uh, what God does in the four corners. And I believe it's a season of taking the Word of God and taking everything that we have experienced in God and taking our identity that we have been adopted into Christ to take it now to the world to the world God's revelation is revealed so that the people that it is revealed to can go and reveal it to the nations that's why he had disciples. He discipled them to reveal the mysteries of the kingdom of God, to give them the inside of uh, the mindset of God. And then uh, when he, uh, he was done, he told them, now go, I have given you my name, I have given you my identity, and I have given you my power. Now go into the world and do what? Make disciples of all nations and disciple them, meaning draw them closer to me. Now, what I'm going to share with you here is uh, a very, very powerful and uh, awakening scripture that we find in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 11. And we're going to break it down. I'm not going to go over the time. It's going to be quick. It's going to be fast and we are done. I want you to turn to the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 11. And we'll be talking as we end this uh, powerful set ablaze day. We'll be talking about uh, being rejuvenated in the spirit. Listen, a depressed person cannot go and change a depressed person. When you are depressed, all you're going to talk about is what is going on with you. You got nothing to do to, or to talk about. You can't hear the voice of God if all you hear is your limitation and the depression that you are going through. You see, there is a difference of knowing the Word of God and applying the Word of God and walking in the Word of God. It's a threefold. You know, you apply, you walk. A depressed person cannot reveal the mystery of God. A person who is worried about the things of the world can never disclose the mystery of the character and the nature of God. And we are in a season where God wants to reveal his character, reveal his nature, reveal his goodness, and reveal his power to the communities out there. So how do we rejuvenate now our passion, rejuvenate now our, our, our dreams and our callings and our purposes that God has called us to? We've heard the word, we, our identity is in Christ. That is enough now. Let me take you to the book of Romans 8 verse 11. It begins by, by this. But if, there is a word there, if. Meaning, you could decide otherwise. It begins by, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, which he is in us. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in you. We're going to look at that word quicken. Because the phrase, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies, is a very important phrase in that chapter. 
it's in this, it, 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 it is speaking of the same power that raised Jesus Christ is the same power that is going to raise you up. What this scripture is talking about is not talking about you dying and then the power of God raises you up. It's talking about you having an empowerment in this life right now, being quickened right now, being revived right now, so that the same power that raised Jesus Christ can quicken your mortal bodies here on earth and do the will of God. So if you look at that phrase... First, we begin to understand that our mortal bodies, I think Pastor Hian has, uh, has touched on this, our mortal bodies are full of limitations. That's why our perfection is in Christ. He has no limits. You can never confine him in a box. So you begin to understand our mortal bodies are full of limitations. Our motor bodies are full of obstacles that will stop you from uh, being or becoming or manifesting the Christ in you, which is the hope of glory. Look, we can talk all we want. We are king's kids until we act like it. And I don't mean like lacking. I mean like do like the king. Then we are no kings. A doctor can never be called a doctor in the, in the, in the, uh, at the hospital if he's uh, not performing the duties of a doctor. Uh-huh. Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is the manifestation of what Christ has done on the cross through a people. Meaning Christ comes and he dwells in the people to manifest the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Now, with our motor bodies, we are limited. That's why we have talked about our identity being in who? In Christ. So when, when we look at this scripture, it is very, very, very uh, 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 powerful scripture because we understand with our motor bodies, we have limitations and there is nothing we can do within our willpower or our strength or our wisdom to change that. You can never go to a doctor to fix your limitation. When you are tired, you are tired. All you want to do is sit on the couch and watch television. And nobody can fix that. But there is a supernatural power that comes upon us that causes us to do things in within our ability we can never do them why because we are in Christ a tired Christian is a Christian who is using his own willpower to achieve something on behalf of God and it doesn't work that's why we go into many churches around the world you find they're exhausted and the message of the evangelists of those days were like, uh, are you served? You go into hell. Oh, I don't want to go to hell. You, you, you get your ticket to go to heaven. And then now you are just seated in, in the pews, exhausted, tired. Why? Because you are tired because you haven't been doing what you were created to do. Oh, my goodness. I, I hope I'm taking you somewhere here. Here it goes. We feel exhausted both physically and spiritually, because our body, our motor bodies, without the presence of God, they have limitations. We can never achieve anything for the kingdom of God with our own wisdom. You can go to a theological school. They can pump you with a PhD, 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 and still you will have limitation. Why? There is only an extraordinary spirit that God has has invested in each one of us that we need to activate so that we can be all he has called us to be. Even when you are tired, you feel refreshed. Why? Because you are not riding on your own winds you are riding on the power and the grace of God I go to many places where Christians are tired of being what of being Christians tired of being Christians my first question is were you even served because once you come in contact with that power you are re-energized forever 
Once you get in contact with that power, you've been rejuvenated in the spirit. You got the passion. Yes, you may fail, you may fall here, you may fail there. That's why the Bible says what? The righteous, who have been righteous in who? In God, can fail how many times? Seven times. They will rise up. Why? They've been touched by God. There is no turning back. There is no going back. Just because I failed yesterday doesn't mean I'm going to fail tomorrow. I'm going to work and up to the life of Christ in me. Yeah. So here what is happening here is that uh, we begin to see that in our own, we have limitations. Our vision are limited. Because what you and me see is what we see in front of us. There are few animals that God identify himself with. Did you notice that? One of the, the birds or the animal, if you like, that God likes to identify himself with is an eagle. So why would God identify himself with an eagle? What does an eagle have, have, have or the attributes of an eagle to cause God to say, I am like an eagle? Why? Sight. And then it flies so high. But it can be so high up and still see far beyond. You see what? That is the vision that is limitless. Why? Because it's empowered by the destiny of the kingdom of God. When you get in touch and in contact with the kingdom of God and that destiny rubs off of you, you see things that people do not see. That is the difference between a Christian who has experienced the presence and the power of God sees things very different. You can live at the level where you see just limitation. You see just the struggles. You see just everyone what they are seeing but are you a christian that is rejuvenated enough to see past what you see the troubles you see in your city oh this is maybe beyond you i don't know but that's what i see whenever i see i'm looking to god to say empower my vision enlarge my territory Jab, uh, 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 Jabez would cry, enlarge my territory, empower my territory, enlarge my vision. Let me see not just the limitation that I see. Go into any churches, you're going to find Christians that are tired of being Christians. And my question is, have you really, really gotten in touch with heaven? Romans 8 verse 11 shows, shows us where our extraordinary strength to keep going comes from. It is from the Holy Spirit. The word quicken is the Greek word zupohel. That's how they say it, zupohel. Let me give you the spelling for that. The pronunciation of it, if you want, Z double O P O I E O. Or you can write it P O Y to pronounce it with our accent E H O. What is this word that is used so often? So often it is used in the Bible. This word comes from uh, two words. One is zoe. Obviously, we know zoe. Z O He. This word is a Greek word for what? For life. We're breaking down that quicken. And uh, if you look at uh, 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 the, the other word, zoe, so zoe, po hell. Hel, po hell simply means what? It's, it simply describes, it simply, sorry, means uh, uh, to make or I will make. It is used in the, in, in the book of Matthew, it is used 581 times. And the one who used it was Jesus. About quickening. Go read the book of Matthew. I can give you an example. Matthew chapter 4 verse 19. The very, very popular scripture that you know. What does it say? Follow me, I will make. 
So the word zo, uh, uh, po, po hell, I will make or to do, Jesus is telling his disciples, follow me, I will make you fishers of men. This word is used 581. That means it got my attention to study it. And especially it is Jesus who has, made, who has done what? Who has spoken this word to make. Look, Jesus right now is looking for a people. He can work into his truth. He can work into his righteousness. He can work into his identity so that he can make them do what heaven is crying for his people to do. God wants heaven to manifest through you and me as it is in heaven here on earth. So if you begin to see this word, po, po, po hell, it simply means to do. So when these two words, Zoe and Pohel, are compounded together, it means to make alive with life. To make alive with life. To cause to live. Have you ever had the joy of living? You see, the problem in, the, in our world is that we associate living with, with things. I got to have this in order to enjoy my life, yeah. to live. You will never live if you associate your, your life with things. But when you are in Christ and you've been in touch with heaven, you have this cause to live. What did Paul say? I can go and die for the gospel, but I want to leave. Why? Because I got a message that needs to be heard, so it is causing me to leave here on earth so that I can proclaim the word to the, hell, to the world. People say, I want to die for the gospel. I said, no, don't die for the gospel yet until you, you are caused to leave for the gospel. Because the first thing that God is going to ask, what did you do for me? Meaning, have, have you caused the gospel, have you lived for the gospel or for the good news or for the message that Jesus preached? There is a difference to live for that. I live for the gospel, Paul would say. I live to preach this Christ. So when you look at that word, Zoe and Pohel, uh, uh, when they come in contact, it simply means to restore to life or to give increase of life increase of life I like that because uh, in this day we are living in God want to rejuvenate the people's uh, dreams and visions about the kingdom of God to increase its life there is life when you serve God there is life when you pursue Jesus there is life when you know God there is life when you live for Jesus Christ this is not a religious game that we work until we go, we die, and then we say, I lived for Christ. He wants you to live for Him right now. I wouldn't accept anybody to say, I'm going to take a bullet, and you'll ever live with me to say, I want to take your bullet. The people that should take a bullet, like Jesus did, where before we were, he, the Bible says, we were yet sinners, and yet He took a bullet for us. He went to the cross, He died. Before you repented me and me, me and you. Why? Because he wanted us to live the life of the kingdom of heaven. Thus he had to die. You see, the idea of those two words carries uh, uh, an idea of uh, being rejuvenated in the spirit. When you are rejuvenated in the spirit, you begin to think differently. When you know where your confidence comes from, you begin to think differently. You don't think about how people are going to react to that which you do for the kingdom of God. But if you are full of concerns about yourself, or what, I think you can attest to this. Before you do something, what will the people say? What will the people think? Nowadays with the first book or these social media, before you post, you're like, oh, what will the people say? And what will the people do? Isn't that true? You see, when you are concerned about what heaven is concerned about, you will do what heaven wants you to do, the concerns of heaven.
We can't fulfill anything without walking closer to the Holy Spirit. He, the Holy Spirit. As Romans says 8 verse 11, He, the, the Spirit, the same Spirit that raised Jesus Christ will raise you up. We see now where the connection is. We see now where their identity is. We've been talking about their identity. The Spirit of God cries and bears witness that we are the children of God. Meaning you can't do without the Holy Spirit. You can't live this Christian life without the Holy Spirit. It's impossible to live in the divine nature and power without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is like the seals that seals the ordeal. Think of it of a, of, 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 of a pipe that doesn't have the seals. There will be some leaks all over it until you put some seals around it. Isn't that true? So the leaks that come from our lives, our attitude, our behavior, the way we see things, the way we see ourselves, the way we do things is because the Holy Spirit isn't sealing everything that needs to be sealed or we are not allowing the Holy Spirit to seal everything that has been already sealed in the Bible. That's why they are leaks. Passionless, desireless. We can't do or be what we are called to be without the Holy Spirit. We are a new man and perfected in Christ. And the evidence of that is what? The Holy Spirit. If somebody was to tell you, I am perfected by God, I will say, where is the evidence of it? There should be some evidence. And we're not talking about speaking in tongues. You see, the world is waiting for the signs of God to be manifested. The signs of God who realizes their identity, what they have, what they possess. They may still have trouble. Pastor Hian made a very, very significant point, And I was uh, paying too close attention to it. The plane will fly. To, it defiles the power or the law of gravity. And it still flies. But that gravity is still there. Did you catch that? The problem with our mindset is that we don't want any troubles to be there. We don't want anything to be cracked there. We can only serve God when everything is going well. We can only serve God when the paycheck is there. That's not how it's supposed to be. When you have the Spirit of God, all these troubles may be there, but you are not limited to those problems or troubles around you. You realize I can defy gravity. Just because these problems are here doesn't mean that I can't soar with Christ. I can soar like an eagle. Why? Because it's Christ who enables me to soar like an eagle. We are so busy, caught up in looking at uh, what we can't, what we can, uh, our, our failures. Uh, 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 I've, I've had people, we, you share like a vision or, 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 or thing, and they are looking at their numbers and the, and the paycheck. Oh, we can only do this if the numbers are right. You will never do anything even if the numbers were right, because that's not how the law of the kingdom of God operates. It operates by faith. you got to step out, and faith is triggered by what is in you if the Holy Spirit is the one who is in you it will trigger that faith because your confidence does not come through your ability it comes through the babbling of the Spirit that is in you you respond to what the Holy Spirit is speaking in there when we speak of being rejuvenated in the Spirit we are speaking of uh, you know shutting off every force force I mean fear every words that comes towards you you shut them down I'm gonna only listen to one man and one person alone that's the Holy Spirit yeah. there are so many voices speaking to us in this world today 
That's why we have an identity crisis, man of God. We can preach about the, our identity in Christ. The moment we go, we open the, the first book, all these other things. There are so many voices coming. You know you can shut those voices by only obeying and listening to one voice. That's the Holy Spirit's voice. I, I only respond to what He orders me to do. That's why... Your Christian life and my Christian life can never be a successful one if the Holy Spirit is absent. If he is absent, you can know the word of God. The Bible says what? Even the devil knows the word of God. The only thing that is absent is what? Is the power of the spirit of God. Because the power of the spirit of God quickens that word. And it makes the word of God to do, to become, and to operate. Words are empty if they are not backed by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why you can confess all you can confess. If you don't realize you are confessing in the power and in the authority of the Holy Spirit that dwells in you, those words will be just words of a wishy-washy words. I have many people that have wishy-washed. I wish, I wish, I wish. 20 years. They're still the same, on the same mountain, fighting the same battle. That is not the will of God. Because the word that comes from the mouth of God does not go back to God void. It accomplishes everything that God desires to, 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 I mean, to do. Meaning, his sons and his children, when they speak, they are speaking from the authority of the power of Christ that is in them. Meaning, your word should never go back to you void. And remember this, your word are your seed. What you speak, that's what you plant. Why? There is power, there is authority. What makes those words powerful? It's because of the DNA that you are carrying in your system that comes out through the word. When Pastor Ian was sharing about changing the way we think, changing our mindset as well, we got to change even the words that we speak upon our lives. We can never be by speaking, I can't, I won't, I will never. Oh man, this is just in our family. This is just a case. It has been there. It has been. You will never see anything different. Insanity is insanity because you are trying to do the same stuff and expect to, to reap a different result. That is insanity. Change what you plant in the seed, you will change what you reap. So we find this Holy Spirit, His presence in us is the mark of Christ's ownership of me and of you. The Holy Spirit is the, is the mark. It identifies, it speaks to the enemy. We have been marked. We, Christ is our owner. Every company has a name and their logo. What does that mean? They own that company, and that company belongs to them. If you are ever to use their logo or their name uh, without their permission, they are suing you. Because it doesn't belong to you. Same with you. The enemy should never attack you when there is a demarcation or when there is a mark of the Holy Spirit over your life. You see, we, we got to realize that our identity in Christ carries the authority and it carries the power. You see, if, I, if, 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 if somebody was to tell you that uh, I'm from the president and uh, I'm a very close friend of the president and the president that told me to come and pick you up, you're going to go to White House or you're going to go to whatever, whatever office of these bigger higher offices, you will have the confidence to say, wow, you're going to go in there. You won't even like, a, if, if, if he told you and you are all by yourself, you're going through the, the, those, uh, you know, uh, the security system, you're going to have confidence. Confidence. You won't be there, oh, I'm here because they called me. No, you're going to have the boldness. Hey, I just spoke to the president. I oh, on my phone. He just called me. He told me I have to come here. Oh, okay, let's see in the name. Oh, yeah, 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 you go. You won't even go like, a, oh, please, can I see the president? Why? He has given you the authority. He has given you the seal. He has given you the approval. God has given you the approval for this life to do what he wants you to do in this life here on earth. 
Stop praying those prayers. God can I? God may I? God can do? Can, can you? God, he has already said, if you are in me, you know, the reason we pray those prayers is because we are not deeply rooted and connected to the source, the Holy Spirit. When you are connected to the Holy Spirit, you have the boldness. Yes, there is humility of knowing you, you, your power and your authority comes from God. Thank you. I understand that. But I'm not going to face a battle and then start going like, a, with a, oh God, can you? The Holy Spirit. If you don't know how to depend on him, and if I don't know how to depend on him, things becomes very difficult. He is so important because by him we have a consciousness that God is our father, our guide, our protector, and we are perfect in him. You see, why we struggle with identity is because we don't have the consciousness that is triggered by the Holy Spirit to remember that Jesus died for our sin and Jesus has given us a, an identity. Our identity is in Christ. You won't have the consciousness. The difference between an unchristian and a Christian, a Christian is that he has now experienced the consciousness of knowing wrong from the right. Why? Because he has come in contact with heaven. A non-Christian, they haven't. They don't, they've got something that will trigger to them, but they don't have that consciousness yet that provokes them to say, this is disgusting. I want to do what God wants me to do. You see, that is the, the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us assurance of our, our status in the kingdom of God uh, 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 and of our salvation. He approves of all that. In our weakness, when you have the Holy, the Holy Spirit in you and with you, in our weakness and in our limitation, He becomes, first of all, our strength. And in our limitation, He becomes the beyond the limits. There are levels to this Christian life. You can live at the level where you use your intellect, where you use your, your mind, where you use your wisdom, you use your study, you use all this stuff. And there is another level where you can just sail in the winds of the Holy Spirit, tuned to his voices and everything he wants to say and everything he wants to do. One day I'm driving somewhere and I told my wife, I'm going to go. We needed, uh, we needed some fans uh, uh, for, for a project we're doing. And then um, I didn't even think about it. I said, you know what? I'm not going to ask nobody about this project. Let me just get along. And these guys have been bugging me about the loan for a long time. And I know it's, uh, it's not very much, so I can just even pay it at one time. So I jumped in my car. I didn't even talk to my wife that day. Started driving. I'm driving. I'm just like two minutes before the, the, uh, the, the office there. And then all of a sudden, the voice comes. Is that what I said? Just stand and go. I did not tell you to go and get a credit to pay for this thing. And all of a sudden, I make a sharp turn without understanding, but I know the higher power, the higher authority, the Spirit of God is testifying to me, this is not the will of God. That is the beauty of being submitted to the Holy Spirit. It is not rolling on the carpet 24-7. It is having the consciousness He is speaking. He is here. He is directing me. He is my dependency. He is the on I'm submitted to. What do you want me to do, Lord? Sometimes we can do something of our own in within our own will, but it won't be God's will unless we obey the Spirit of God and the leading of the Spirit of God. Then we begin to see the fruits. You see, Abraham made a mistake as well. A baby was taking too long to come. What did he do? He had to have a child that was not the will of God for him. There are so many dreams and wills and projects that we take up that are because we have just seen them, they are happening there, and we did not know if it is the will of God. And when the will of God comes as well, we, 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 we don't even go and jump and do them because they don't look like what we like. God is a God of inconvenience. He will not come to you when you are so, so excited. He will not come to you when your paycheck is so big. He will ask you to do things when you are you yourself. You are looking for a loony to pay for something. Because what he's trying to prove is your heart. Do you have a heart to the heart of God or do you have a heart for yourself? 
That's why opportunities happen to so many people. They, they, they what? They miss the opportunities, not because opportunities did not happen, because opportunities, when they come, God does not send a memo to anybody. When God wants something done, He's requiring your faith. He's requiring you to now, your faith, to correspond with the Spirit of God that is in you. Because if your spirit and the Spirit of God and the faith that you have do not correspond, do not marinate, you cannot respond to that which heaven wants you to do. Your conscience will tell you, I don't have money. Your conscience will tell you, I don't have the abilities. Your conscience will tell you, I cannot do this. But when you know and you realize the Holy Spirit is here, God, this situation has been presented to me. What do you want? You see, there are levels to this Christian life. You can live free, free of all the worries, free of all these things, the pressure, and begin to serve God with joy. Begin to serve God with passion, not because you have. Listen, I don't serve God because I don't have problems. I got some problems. I got some stuff to deal with. But I serve God. I respond to what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. And I find myself, the more I respond to what Jesus did on the cross, the more I do better. People are waiting for everything to be perfected here on earth. For them to be perfect, for them to have a good suit, for them to look good, then they're going to respond to God. It doesn't work that way. The Holy Spirit. He is the one that refreshes us. Matthew 11 verse 28 to 30. These are keys now to be rejuvenated in the spirit. Let me give you a few keys and then we're going to close. And we'll pray for, for God. My, my desire is to pray with you this, this afternoon that the spirit of God is going to rejuvenate your vision, is going to rejuvenate your passion, is going to rejuvenate your desire, is going to show you clearly what you ought to be doing. You don't have to be running from here to there. It's going to show you clearly what you are, what you are got to do, the identity you have in him. You know, when you realize all that, you narrow life down. There is no running to the left, to the right. Ever since I discovered what God called me to do, I've never called myself an apostle. I've never called myself a bishop. I've never called myself whatever because I have under understood my call. My call as an evangelist, that's all I need and it will never be upgraded because when God has made something perfect, like Pastor Hian says, there is no room for improvement. The people that changes today, they are apostles. Tomorrow they are bishop of the bishops or whatever. They are trying to find room to improve their identity out there. You see, without understanding, your calling is perfect in itself because the one who called you, he is perfect in himself. Here, Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30. Come to me, who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. When you see that word rest there, it's not talking about you laying on the carpet, on, on the couch without, with, without no problem. That is not what he's saying there. Because if you, if you read the first verse, it says, Come to me, all who, all who labor and I have laden, I will give you rest. He's saying, you all who have troubles, come to me. I, 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 I'll give you rest. And then it, takes, it, it goes on to here. Look at this. Take my yoke upon, your, upon you. Wow, my yoke again? You're telling me you're going to give me rest? What was the yoke? They'll put a yoke in the, in the, in the, in, uh, in the head of a, of a, of a, of a cow. So that that yoke can control where they want the cow to go. Isn't that true? As it is plowing, they can control it somehow to go into the direction they want. So what Jesus is saying here, he's saying, I will give you rest by giving you another direction. I take my yoke, which is not going to put you down. It's a yoke that's going to lift you up and I'm going to give you direction. I'm going to give you where to go. I'm going to direct you. I'm going to send you where you need to go. Just like a, a yoke was put on a cow as, the, as, as it was plowing. You will begin to plow. With me, without any pressure, without any guilt, you can plow with me, you can work with me, and you can be fruitful. 
There is a difference between being fruitful and just being a Christian without being fruitful. The world does not look at empty words. They look at the fruitfulness of where we are and what we have done. And I'm not talking about numbers here. The fruitfulness. When people see you, what do they see? Do they see the glory, the manifestation of the presence of God? Or do they see somebody who is just looking into themselves saying, Oh, poor me. Oh, poor me. We torch ourselves so many times. Look here. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle, meaning I am not going to, to say you're not getting it. You see, as a parent, what do we do when the kids repeat the same mistake over? You're not getting it. But him is saying I'm a different, different. I'll, take, take my yoke. I'm gentle, meaning I am willing to walk with you at whatever level you may be. You don't have to be ashamed when you are a Christian. Whatever the past holds you, whatever things as you've done, whatever things has got you to, don't be ashamed. I want to walk with you. I want to get all those stuff out of you so that when you are free, you will have rest. And when you have rest, you will pray nicely. You will pray in power. You will pray in authority. You will pray in connectivity with God. Because when your mind is filled with the stuff from the past, you can pray all you want, but it is draining you. That's why you're just praying and you can shout, but it is draining you. Why? Because you are not connected to the rest that comes from knowing the presence and the Spirit of God. There is a diff, there is a level to go to. You see the difference here. He knows, God knows, when you are full of uh, stuff in your life, you won't function according to the way He wants you to function. That's why He's saying, take up my yoke. I will show you the direction. I will give you rest. I am gentle, Lord, in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. That is a very big significance right there. So many people, so many of us don't have rest in our soul. You know, we rest the body. When we are tired, what do we rest? The body and the mind. But you can't rest your soul. The only one who rests your soul is the Spirit of God. When your soul is rested, guess what happens? God begins to reveal his mystery, his dreams, where he wants you to be. Now you can hear God. I was working at a place not too long ago. I wanted to be supplying for my family. And then I'm at this place. My mind is being bombarded by God showing me this, God showing me that. God show- I told my wife I can't work anymore because God is showing me some things to be done. And when I stepped down, for real, those things have come to pass right now and I'm telling my wife my wife she's my witness she wants me to go and work out there I'm an evangelist I live through the gospel sometimes I don't have anywhere to go and preach so I have to go and work but you look when you are in tune to the Holy Spirit God begins to give you ideas God begins to give you words to go things to do and it becomes difficult for you to listen to other voices of the world because he is speaking to you he has narrowed it down and you have to follow its suit this is not not just a wishy-washy sitting God is speaking to me what did you do after he spoke man of God come and play the keyboard quickly here as we wind up I hope you've gotten something take my yoke mean means to be concerned for what what God is concerned about and to be dedicated to what he is dedicated about meaning you're gonna go in this life with him it feels good to have a friend who is stick who sticks closer than a brother who doesn't judge you you can go through this life you can go through now navigating through life knowing my identity is in Christ knowing I'm empowered by the Spirit of God knowing I stand on the Word of God I am not who they think I am of the past I'm a different person I come from a very troubled purpose past he can tell you many people I got loads of people on social media who knew me then and most of them I'm I'm told they've received salvation by just watching what God had done with with this life the life considered to be useless 
But listen, when you come in contact with heaven, your uselessness becomes your usefulness to the kingdom of God and to those around you. Such is the power of, being, of experiencing the presence of God. But what stops us from, from accepting this Jesus to do stuff with us is because we are ashamed of where we've been in life. Look, we can talk all we want about the identity, but if you don't look, if you don't cut off the past to embrace the new identity, the past will st still speak in your life. You say, God says, the past says, I say. God says you are righteous in him. The past say, I know what you did that day. And, and then now there is this conflict and there is this voices whispering fear, whispering lies, whispering stuff in the mind. Now we come to God. We are in a crisis. We can't respond to our new identity and we can't respond to the functionality that comes with an identity. And we can't also function to the responsibility of that identity. Because the past is speaking as well. The past is trying to work on us as well. And God is saying uh, the, the, this afternoon that uh, uh, take my yoke. Take my yoke. Come walk with me. Come walk with me. And if you walk with me, I will run with you. And if I run with you, I will protect you. If I protect you, there is nothing to fear. It doesn't mean that things will be perfect. It doesn't mean that those circumstances won't try to come back. But he's saying those circumstances may be around there because your eyes are fixed on what Jesus did on the cross. And on the cross he said what? It is finished. It is done. Psalms 119 Verse 105, as we wind up, you can pick it up, man of God. I'm just going to read these scriptures here. It says, uh, your word is a lamp to my feet and uh, a light to my path. Jeremiah 15, verse 16, in your words were found and uh, I hate them. And uh, your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. This is Jeremiah. He was considered a weeping prophet, a man who was never accepted. Everything he preached, they thought he was just a crazy guy. He was considered a, a weeping prophet. Nothing went, nobody accepted his speech. But he says, uh, when I found your word, I hid that word. It became what? My joy. Where do you find your joy from? From your paycheck? From having nice stuff? Because you see, if you try and find your joy from those things, you will never be joyful because true joy comes from the word of God. They stand up. Rejuvenating your spirit and binds you, releasing those parts of you that are enslaved to the fears and to the things of this world. Your fears and anxieties lose their power to tie you down because you are operated by the Spirit of God and by a new identity that has got no limitation. When your life feels barren, when your life feels like you are stuck, let the Holy Spirit help you focus on God's faithfulness and which, which, which flourishes during a season of hardship. When you feel like you've gotten to the bottom, to the, to the bottom of life, understand your identity in Christ, understand who you are in Jesus Christ, because that brings life, that brings revival to yourself, to understand I am not what I'm going through. You are not living in denial. There is a difference in living in denial and a difference of seeing things as God sees them. When your circumstances have, uh, have you feeling stuck or you feel like you are in a dry valley or your vision is in a dry valley or your passion is fading or everything you do doesn't work, 
I believe the Spirit of God can revitalize or rejuvenate your spirit and rejuvenate your soul so that you can have the passion once again, the same desire that you had when you had God in you. You desire to be in the house of the Lord. You desire to be in the Word. And I believe right now that God is speaking to your soul, reviving it once again, speaking to you, I am not done with you yet. May the Holy Spirit saturate your hearts with His promises as we embrace our moments of stillness with courage, knowing my identity is not in who I am. My identity is not in my tribe. My identity is not in my nation. My identity is not in where I was born. My identity is not in my knowledge. My identity is in Christ. My identity is in who God says I am. I am not defined by the things that surround me or the things of the past. I am defined by what heaven defines me as a child of God. I am born of the Spirit, born in God, born in Christ. I am a new man and a new nature. And there is nothing that the enemy can do to change that because that is sealed under the blood of Jesus and by the Spirit of the Sovereign God. You see, that is what the Word of God speaks about. When God visits you, He visits your passion, He visits your soul, He visits your spirit. He brings healing to your soul, He brings healing to your mind, He brings healing to your passion because the enemy tries to rob you off that which God created you. And God is saying, my son, my child, my daughter, I am in this presence right now. I have come to do what? To I have come to renew. I have come to revive. I have come to transform. I have come to lay down a new path for you. For this year is a new year. It's a year of my manifestation. And I want to manifest my glory in your life. Your past has no hold over your life. Your struggles has no hold over your life. I am giving you a new chapter. You are taking on the presence of the sovereign God. You see, when the Spirit of God is speaking to us, what He does is that He captures our heart and He captures our soul. And I pray at this moment that you don't miss the point of what Jesus wants to do with your life. Do not let this moment pass as you by. Do not let this moment pass as you by. This is a very important moment where the Holy Spirit is bringing to light your vision. He's bringing to life your callings. He's bringing to life that which has called you because you have been called to walk up higher. He is working in us right now. Reviving every single thing in our lives. Bringing hearing and restoration. He restores because He wants you restored to restore those around us. That such is our God. Our God wants the best for each one of us. Our God wants the best for you. It is not over. The enemy's lies are gone. Today is a new day. It's a brand new day. Let the mercy of the Holy Spirit and the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ right now just, just overshadow everything you've been through in life. Let the mercy and the glorious presence, the kavod, the kavod, the glory of God encompasses your life today. Let the presence of God begin to fire up those uh, power and fire up the stars of the living God upon your life today. May this moment mark a moment of the new dimension in your life. You can go deeper and you are going deeper and you can touch heavens by your life. Jesus created you for a purpose. Jesus created you for a purpose. 
Father, I pray for your people in this place, even as you walk among us right now, Holy Spirit. I just pray that we are standing on the holy ground, and I pray that let your presence and let your spirit and let your power fall upon each one of us, bringing to life every dream, bringing to life every, every vision in the name of Jesus. Every limitation, I command them to go. Every voices that you hear that is not of God, I command Command them to be silenced right now in the name of Jesus. Every spirit that is not of God that have tried to influence you, I command it to go because we are in the season of the influence of the glory of God and we cannot allow the enemy to take over. Father, thank you for what you're doing right now. Thank you for rejuvenating the lives right now. Thank you for reviving these lives right now. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your touch. Thank you, Jesus, that you, we are here because of your mercy. Speak your word, O oh God. Begin to give revelations to these, your people. Begin to show them, Father, what they are, what they are capable of, and where you're taking them. I pray for new dimension of revelations. New dimension of a passion. He is speaking to you right now in an unusual way. He is speaking right now to us in this place. Such is the beauty of knowing Jesus that He would come and touch our hearts, that He would come and soothe our spirit. That it would come and give us revelations. That it would come and give us directions. Such is the beauty of this Jesus that we serve. That he would choose to walk among us. That he would choose to be with us. He would choose to stand with us. I don't think you see what I see in the spirit right now. This Jesus... This Jesus, you're sure, our Messiah, he would choose to come down in this meeting today to walk with us, to speak with us, to show us the way, to show us the direction. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Oh, thank you. Just lift up those hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Mean it, mean it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh. Just for a few seconds, just close those eyes and lift up those hands as He speaks to you. speak just let him speak give him room to offer us he is beautiful let him speak let him speak yes you 